Mosquito. Of Del Campo here. You know, we're usually working on these older cars with carburetors and points ignitions and things, because that's kind of what I grew up with, and that's kind of what we like. But we also have this Jeep. It's a 2008 Jeep Patriot, and it's yeah, it's a good car to have around. But it's an electronic car, so I consider it as a late model car, even though it's an 08. It might not be that late model, but it operates like an 08 model car. It's got all these electronics, and it's really something. We're driving it, and it's starting to misfire, not run right, and so... We're going to go see what the codes are. I have a code reader that is a, it's a link. It's an OBD link, I guess is what it's called. Hooks to a laptop. I've had it for a while. But there's all kinds of readers. There's one you can make, you can plug it in and it Bluetooths to your phone. There's a lot of these things that will tell you what's going on. What we did was we hooked it up and we got several codes. And there's codes in there about misfiring and uh, maybe two of them about misfiring. It goes by oxygen sensor, but the one that stood out was code P2010, which is the intake manifold runner control circuit. What is that? Well, the intake manifold apparently has two different runners that are different lengths or different sizes or something. And there's a there's a thing in here. Looks like this, bolts to the side of that. And there's a there's a thing in here that turns and it, it changes from one set of runners to the other adds runner length or something. I don't know exactly how it works. I haven't had the intake panel fold apart. But that, if you read the description, that's what it does. So we pulled this thing off. And Kim started looking at it. You know, Kim fixes things. It is a $30 item. Most people would just replace it. But Kim took it all apart. She goes to what she calls uh, YouTube University. Go in there and search it. Search for intake manifold runner control circuit and see what comes up. And she found some videos on it. And, the, and that's how we learned what it does. Apparently what happens to these is they get sticky and they don't work very well. She took it apart and that bearing's in there and the surface the bearing runs on has got all notches and everything in it. So it catches and it really doesn't turn very smoothly. That's likely what the problem is. Then we think about the, the other codes, which is, which is the, the misfires. Well, that causes the misfire. So hopefully when we change that, that valve, the misfires will go away. And then the oxygen sensor, that code is probably because the wrong gases are getting down to the oxygen sensor. It's outside its limits. So we're not going to run out by an oxygen sensor. And that happens a lot. People get an oxygen sensor code and they replace the oxygen sensor. And what that means is it's the, the computer's not seeing the range that the oxygen, what it expects from the oxygen sensor. So what we're thinking is when we replace something where we know we found the problem, Put it on there, reset the code, reset everything, and then see if they come back up again. And it's likely it'll clear all the codes and they won't come up because that intake manifold runner control circuit can affect all the other things. So we're going to do that. we got to order the part. <laughs> kind of a new car for us, but it's a good car. It's nice to drive around. And it's not impossible for somebody like us to, uh, to diagnose the problem. So it can be done. And, uh, in fact, a lot, of, a lot of parts stores will read the codes for you, and maybe you can figure it out that way. Although having a code reader is a nice thing to do. So uh, have fun with this stuff. It's not impossible.